can color this jerseys now.
All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if for some reason um, we lose connection and or um, you can't hear me, or you can't see the screen. Uh, one of the players that are online, if you just do me a favor and just unmute and chime in and let me know and or uh, just shoot me a text message. Um, it's been a while since some of us have used Zoom. So if we uh, have a technical issue, um, just feel free to uh Take yourself off mute and just chime in and let me know. Um, I'll stick to the uh, schedule here. Um, as you can see, the agenda on the screen, um, we'll go over these um, items one by one. Um, this is uh, a, an informational meeting um, <clears throat> for all the players that are interested in trying out for the baseball program at Blue Valley West in 2024. Um, coach Allison, head baseball coach at Blue Valley West. Uh, this will be my sixth year. Um, there's always an asterisk next to that uh, due to the COVID year. Um, so technically, it'll just be my fifth season um, with us not playing any games in 2020. So um, first things first, we'll talk about eligibility. Um, the number one thing that uh, always uh, comes first is uh, student comes before athlete. So we've got to make sure that one, um, all of our players are eligible um, which means they have to pass at least five classes this fall semester. Um, and then they have to be enrolled in at least five classes in the spring semester. Um, I've met with 60% of our players in the last four days, and we're making sure that, uh, you know, we go over several questions and make sure that they're one, that they're doing well in their classes now, and two, that they're, they're enrolled in at least five classes next semester. If I haven't met with your player yet, or if you're a player on here and I haven't met with you yet, um, we have tomorrow and then we'll get that done the week after break. So um, paperwork, um, everybody's favorite thing to do. Um, if you're, if your player is, uh, is played a fall sport, football or soccer or cross country, or they uh, have played or tried out in a winter sport, um, their paperwork should be good to go. You don't have to redo it for the spring sports. Those of you that don't have athletes or if you're a player on here and you have not participated in a school sport yet, you'll need to go online and get your paperwork submitted. The number one thing with the paperwork is going to be the physical. Um, there used to be a bunch of minute clinics and doctors were real easy to get students in in the past. However, it seems as though the last couple of years, um, it's a little bit more difficult for our, our players to get their physicals done. So 
please don't wait um, until February to get that done. Get those physicals set up and scheduled um, as soon as possible. Get them taken care of so you're not trying to rush at the end there. We only have the the four active days of tryouts, which I'll cover here in a little bit. You don't want to be stuck uh, behind um, um, everybody else because you don't have your paperwork in. Okay, winter sports. Um, you know, I'm a really big advocate for multi-sport athletes. I think it helps them learn to compete better. It's always good to get better uh, different styles of coaching. It's great to be around your uh, your classmates and your your teammates in different sports and different competitive settings. Um, so with that being said, we just we want to make sure that you understand that our players understand that we do want them to, to, to play fall sports and winter sports at our school. I don't want to encourage them to skip out on those those experiences and those activities just to get ready for baseball. Uh, currently, we have boys basketball going on, wrestling, swimming, and I believe there's a boys bowling team now, but I'm not 100 percent sure. So um, they have those options um, as far as the school goes. Um, and please note that if, if we do have some of our baseball guys participating in winter sports, that's their number one priority when it comes to after school activities. Um, they don't need to participate in any of our uh, um after school workouts, um, they need to focus on their winter sport. Okay, winter workout expectations. First off, as I just mentioned, we'd like for them to participate in off-season sport. Um, and then it, it, whether it be our program or their own, we really need them to participate in an off-season speed and agility and strength training program. Um, so far with the players that I've met with over the last four days, um, eighty percent of our players are enrolled in a strength and conditioning class at Blue Valley West, so they're taking care of their strength training aspect at school. Um, and then our players have always done a really good job, um, whether it be in season or off season, um, taking care of their 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 training outside of school. For example, um, we have um, KU Med does a great job, top speed PSP three. Um, a couple of the uh, local academies are doing their own. Um, specialized training now. Um, so I know that there's there's opportunities out there. Um, I will tell you this, the workouts that we do at Blue Valley West on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, um, they are solely designed to uh, basically just get our, our players around each other, working together. Um, we will do some speed and agility. Um, we will do some um, some plyometrics, but most, most importantly, we're going to do team building exercises and get our kids to be around each other and, and, and be comfortable working with each other and, and, and learning the IGYB concept of having each other's back. So that's what those are for. Um, so please note that what we do at schools is not going to be enough to, 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 to get our students and our players to the caliber in which we're going to need to compete if we want to stay the course as we have the past five years. So with that said, um, the strength, the strength training, speed and agility options, enrolling in a strength and conditioning class at Blue Valley West, as I mentioned, several of our students have done that. I just covered number two with all the extra um, options that they have outside of uh, Blue Valley West. Um, several of our players participate in clubs or academies. Um, their, their clubs or academies have their own training sessions as well. And then um, the last one, as I mentioned, which I'll cover here in a minute, is we host ours on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So uh, on Mondays and Wednesdays, uh, we'll start in the first week of December, December 4th. Uh, we will go from 255 to 340, so it's roughly 45 minutes. We'll meet in the weight room. Um, we'll stretch the kids. We'll do some speed and agility and some team building drills. Uh, we will all, we will go outside. Um, we'll go. We'll stay inside. We'll use whatever space is available um, to get these activities done. And then Friday mornings we meet from 6:30 to 7:15, and those are the fun days for the players. Um, they get to uh, uh, compete in different activities um, like three on three basketball, volleyball. Um, and then a couple other fun games that we do in the wrestling room and um, on the track and those type of things. So um, as I mentioned, they will not get um, substantially better in their speed and agility and or strength training just by doing our workouts. They need to be doing their other workouts either in the weight room and or um, at those uh, other options that we mentioned. Um, attire. Um, we expect our players to come in either a black T-shirt or Blue Valley West gear. Um preferably Blue Valley West baseball gear. If you don't have that, not a big deal. We have several freshmen that don't have Blue Valley West baseball attire yet. Um, they can always come see me. We have extra and or they can just wear black, a black t-shirt or black sweatshirt will be fine. Um, they need to have shorts, pants, t-shirts, socks, tennis shoes. Um, we don't need any baseball equipment. We will not be doing any baseball activities per the, the state rules. Um, we're not allowed to do that. So 
please note that. Um, these workouts are run by myself, Coach Ashen, Coach Lahasky, Coach Harrison. Uh, we will take care of these workouts. One of us will always be there to run these workouts. Um, they're free and they're open to all students at Blue Valley West. And then, as I mentioned before, some of our workouts will be outside. So players will need to always have a, a sweatshirt, uh, a hoodie, a, a small jacket, or a pair of sweatpants. Um, I'm not a fan of the cold, so the players can breathe a sigh of relief. If it's too cold, we will not go outside. Um, new this winter, um, Keisha passed a new rule this year. Um, in fact, they passed two new rules, but the first one was is that uh, um, starting in February, we'll be able to work with our players on an arm care program two times per week, the four weeks prior to the start of the season. Um, so what that means to you right now is, is that in February, we'll be able to work with your players directly on an arm care program, which includes pitching, throwing, and work with our catchers. Um, we are waiting for the basketball schedule to be completely finalized before we set those dates. Um, and I'll work directly with each individual player to get those schedules set up because several of our players already have their own throwing programs and arm care programs, and we'll do our best to work around them. But we will have two opportunities each week starting in February for our players to um, do arm care, work on their pitching and catching. So uh, TBD on that. Um, I'll send a separate email on that and I'll meet with the players to get that information out so that you guys have that. So just please know that that is coming in February. So if you didn't already have enough on your plate, there'll be two more days a week when we have something added to the schedule in February. Okay, tryout information. Um, this is very vague as I'll give you the detailed tryout information as far as um, what we're doing every minute in that first week of February slash March um, for tryouts. But I wanna make sure you have these dates in front of you and just a little bit of information on how tryouts work. Tryouts start February 26th this year and they run through March 1st. Okay, I'll pull the calendar up here just in a second so you can see it. Um, as of right now, we have 76 players um, signed up to try out for our program. Um, there could be more, there could be less, but that's that's the number that we are expecting right now. Um, below what you'll see is the number of players that we have uh, traditionally kept per, uh, per level in our program. We have four teams. Uh, we have a varsity. Um, we have a JV. We have a C and we have a D team. Um, the varsity team is usually made up of the 15 to the 18 best players in the program. Um, doesn't matter if you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior. Um, we'll take the top 15 to 18 players uh, in our program, and they'll make up the varsity team. The JV team is made up to 12 to 15 players, um, freshman, sophomore, junior. Um, we do not play seniors on the JV level, um, so it's just those, those three classes that are involved with that. Those are the players that are um, basically varsity guys in waiting um, that were, were they're either backups on the varsity level um, and or they're, they're going to be um, potential varsity guys soon. The C team has traditionally been mostly made up of sophomores. However, we have had freshmen play on the C team, but it's a mix of freshmen and sophomores. We keep 12 to 15 players at that level. And then our D team is solely made up of freshmen. Um, and we'll keep a few more players at this level so we can expand for our freshmen as they develop and, and, and work to get better. Um, but we'll keep um, anywhere between 15 to 18 players um, on the D team. So um, there's no exact science to that. Um, it's just an estimate over what we've done over the last five years, but uh, gives you a good uh, a gauge of what, what we do as far as numbers go. Um, I'll leave you with this, and, and it's just it's just a reality check. Um, if you do the math, you realize that with 76 players and only so many roster spots, we do have cuts. We do not keep everybody. Um, we are a very competitive program. Um, we, uh, we we pride ourselves on, on, on a lot of success that we've had over the past few years. And honestly, since the school opened in 2001, um, we've been fortunate to have a lot of really good players come through our program. And I know just in my my five years alone, you know, some of the players that have not made our program would be potential varsity starters in other teams' programs. So, it, it, you know, we're one of the top five programs um, right now in the state of Kansas. And, and you know, I'm proud to be a part of that and proud to work with these guys. But with that comes the expectations and, you know, the toughness to make our roster and to make our teams. And you're a part of that. I mean, parents, you've invested your time. Players, you've invested your time. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a difficult situation, but it's also a, a blessed situation because 
as I mentioned, we're one of the better programs in the state, and, and that's our goal is to stay, stay at that level. Um, player packs. Um, before I talk about that, I'm going to stop share real quick. So players, um, if one of you on here notices that once I uh, pull the calendar up, if it doesn't show up, just chime in and let me know that you don't see it. So give me about 10 seconds here to pull that calendar up. Okay, so it tells me that I'm sharing. So for some reason it's not. Go ahead and unmute and let me know. But as of right now, the December calendar is on the screen. Um, if you notice, this, uh, December 4th is a Monday. That's our first workout. We'll go Mondays and Wednesdays after school for two weeks straight. And then Fridays we'll go in the morning um, leading up to finals. There are finals this week here, the 18th through the 20th. Um, and then we have winter break for a couple of weeks leading into January. If you take a look at January, um, there's no workouts that first week. We come back on the 8th and we'll start, or excuse me, the we'll start workouts back up on the 8th. The students come back um, that first week of January and we'll start workouts back up on the 8th. Um, there's no school on the 15th. Um, so there's no workouts that day, but every other day in January, we're getting after it. Moving on to February. Workouts are posted as, as as scheduled. There's no workouts on the 9th, and um, there's no workouts that week of the 19th, 21st, and 23rd. We're going to give the guys the week off there as far as strength and conditioning goes um, to rest up and be ready to go for the tryouts the 26th. Please note, as I mentioned earlier in February, we will have two days a week um, where we'll have the arm care session. Pitchers and catchers will get work in. Um, that will not coincide with the workouts, unfortunately, um, because we won't have gym space. So um, we'll get you those dates and times um, when we get closer to February so you can plan accordingly. The only thing I'm going to touch on in March is uh, that first week tryout start the 26th, which is February. They roll into March 1st. And then you have this calendar. I emailed it to you so that you can look at a gauge, you know, a gauge of the entire season. Um but please note that these dates are tentative to change. Um, but our entire season schedule is there. Um, I don't have every practice set on the calendar just yet because we will change that. As you know, we have a new new opportunity to practice over on our game, our varsity game field now. So practices will be a little bit different um, as far as all four programs go, or all four teams go. So, But you have this calendar. I email it to you. I'll resend it again tomorrow. Um, but you have all those dates in front of you as far as that goes. I will send you a detailed time time uh, schedule for for tryouts um, when we meet in February again, right before right before tryouts start, and we'll talk about all the exact details about how tryouts are going to run. But I wanted to make sure you had the calendar in front of you. Okay, I'm going to stop share this. One of you players notice. I'm going to pull the uh, PowerPoint back up. If for some reason it doesn't come back up, just chime in and let me know. Okay, it should say player packs on the screen. For some reason it doesn't, just chime in, let me know, or shoot me a text message. Um, player packs. So we're offering these um, early this year just so the players have them going into the season. Um the, the details are all there. I've sent them in an email. I'm not going to cover too much of this. I just want to let you know that we extended this because um, I wanted to be able to talk to you on the Zoom about it. So uh, this will go through um, next Monday, and then we will put the order in on Tuesday. Um, this is basically what the players order and pay for, um, the, for the players that do make the team after that first week of tryouts. Um, obviously, the one setback is, is if for some reason your player does not make the team, um, they'll, they'll be stuck with this gear. So um, the, the, there's no refunds this year um, as far as players that do not make the team if you order ahead of time. So you're ordering this pack at your own risk. Um, so please note that um, it's just it's a it's a convenience, but it's also an inconvenience. So um, please note that. Um, read all the fine print. Um, let me know if you have any individual questions via email, and we'll take care of them for you. The Google Forms there. We ask that you fill out the Google Form if you plan to order one um, early, and then just please make sure you make payment before next Monday. Okay, community service. Um, community service is not mandatory. 
However, I do believe it's a vital part of the development of our young, our young athletes and our young students. Um, there are several different ways to get community service. Um, please note that uh, it, it's a really, really good way for our players to mature, um, give back to their community, um, help each other out, um, and really, you know, represent our program and our school um, like they've, they've always done. So just a couple examples on here, tutoring, volunteering work at, at your church, local nursing home, VFW, Community Center, United Way, Red Cross, the Y, et cetera. Um, working with younger athletes via lessons, officiating, helping coach, um, you know, just simply showing up and helping at our youth camps for the JYBC, um, community projects, snow removal, yard work, habitat for human humanity, um, donations to organizations such as Children's Mercy, Toys for Tots, Harvesters, et cetera. So any and all of that is uh, is is worthy of, 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 of community service. And our players already do so much that they don't even realize. So please just have them document that. <clears throat> and um, the week before tryouts, I just have them ask them that they turn that uh, um, sheet into me. Um, I'll show you real quick. I'm going to stop share. Pull up the community service sheet that I emailed to you. You can either print that off. You can fill it out online. Players can simply just text me as well. That is not the correct sheet start this again so to save us all a bunch of technical difficulties I'll just uh, resend that sheet to the the email tomorrow so that uh, you guys know exactly what it is. But players, you can also just document it on a text message, send it to me that way. You can simply write it down on a blank piece of paper or you can use that sheet that I have emailed your parents. So I also have extra of those sheets in my office if you want to stop by and pick it up. Let me reiterate that uh, the community service is not mandatory. Um, it's just it's just one of those things that as parents, I'd, I'd, I'd hope that you'd want your, your student um, to participate in and it, it, it goes a long way as far as their character goes but it's not part of our evaluation. It's just something that we encourage and that we've always done. So please understand that. Uh, Children's Mercy to Virtual Toy Drive. Um, we'll start that the first week of December. So this is just a footnote right now. We've done it the past uh, five years. Um, the first two years we did Toys for Tots. Um, this 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 will be our third year, fourth year doing uh, Children's Mercy Virtual Toy Drive. Uh, we'll open up an online um, virtual toy drive through Children's Mercy and we'll just make donations that way. Our goal every year is $1,500. Last year, we topped $1,800. Um, for those of you that are similar to my upbringing, um, you rely on um, these type of donations for your holidays. Um, you know, my, my my background as a child, you know, we, we didn't have much. So these type of things really went a long ways as far as, you know, making sure um, kids have a great Christmas or a great holiday or, you know, whatever it is that your family celebrates. Um, Children's Mercy does a great job um, taking care of those those kids at, at the hospital and the surrounding areas that need it. So I won't expand too much on this. We'll, we'll talk about it a little bit later. But I just want to let you know that that'll, that'll pop back up in your emails and your players will know about this the first week of December. Okay, sponsorship opportunities. Um, this is new this year with our new field at the Varsity Field over at Antdac. Um, if you've noticed or if you've been by there at all, they've, they've completed the turf project on the softball and baseball field. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, if we weren't spoiled before, we're definitely spoiled now. Um, all they've got left to do at this point is put the batting cages up and the backstop netting. Um, it looks really good, and they did a really good job. Um, but along those lines, we're going to have the opportunity to sell advertisements for the outfield fence this year, um, which does a couple things for us. One, it allows us to fundraise that money um, for all the equipment that that's listed on the sponsorship sheet. And then it also allows us to um, you know, dress our stadium up I and mean, allow us to put banners up in the outfield um, area. Um, so not only will we have sponsorships out there, but we'll get some banners um, celebrating our state championships, regional championships, those type of thing. Um, so it's, it's, you know, we're really fortunate for that. So I'm going to go ahead and stop share real quick. I've emailed this to you, but I want to make sure you just see it here and that I cover it here real quick. Um, you should see a sponsorship sheet on the screen. Um, if not just uh chime in so that you can see that your screen is paused. So let's see, let's stop share. Let's try it again. All 
All right. So hopefully you can see that sponsorship sheet. If not, please just chime in and let me know. Um, I've also emailed it to you, so you have it there. Um, but you know, we th this is this is our plan that we have in place. Um, we've lowered the price for the initial send off uh, for the uh, um, sponsorships. So um, just read this over. But please do note that all all the equipment that we need to run practice over at the new field is going to have to be bought brand new. So we're working on that right now. We've got price quotes. Um, so we're going to work on getting all that that taken care of. And um, part of the uh, money that comes from the, the sponsorships will cover that. So I'll send out this information once again so that you have it. But I just want to make sure that uh, we're good as far as that goes. All right, back to the slideshow. All right, uh, communication. Um, my contact info is on here. If you want to take a screenshot of that, take a picture with your phone. Um, all this information has been emailed to you as well, but I'll, I'll continue to resend it. Uh, best way to communicate with me is via email and or text message. Feel free to text me or email me anytime. If I don't get back to you within at least one day, please send the same message again. If you have a contact, an email that is not on the distro list now, please email that to me tonight or tomorrow so I can get it added. Um, please make note of our team website, which is bluevalleywestbaseball.com. The school website is Blue Valley or bvwestjags.com. And then the only social media that we currently have that's official is our Twitter page, or X as, as it's called now, um, at bbw baseball 31 um there is a uh instagram account i guess out there but a couple of our students run that and they've done a good job but i can't technically say it's the official site so um follow that at your own risk so um if you'd like to have email addresses added i covered that if you have questions please email those to me so i can take care of you and get you uh get you to get you updated and or answer your questions um email or text is always the best way to communicate with me um, I won't take any questions tonight because to save everybody on time, you can always email me and I'll get right back to you. I will send out this recording um, after we're, we're finished. Um, it takes about oh, a couple hours for it to download. So I'll send that out tomorrow, um, hopefully before noon for those of you that didn't catch the whole meeting or if your player wasn't here or your parents weren't here. So you'll have that with you. Um, I can't, I can't uh, tell you how excited I am. Um, we have some really good young players coming into our program. Um, we have some really good young returners, and then we have some really good veteran returners coming back. So um, we're looking forward to another great year of uh, Blue Valley West baseball. Um, I'm, I'm excited. Our coaches are excited. I know the players are excited. Um, and with new resources this year, it's going to be even more fun. So um, I appreciate you as always. Um, you do a lot. And and I know it's it's a little bit taxing at times, but um, we promise we'll work, we'll work hard to give you a good product and give your kids a, a great, great responsibilities or excuse me, a great experience. So have a great holiday break, have a great weekend and we'll see you soon. Have a good night.